You know those annoying messages you see when you're running an outdated version of iOS on an iPhone or iPad that's no longer supported? Telling you the app requires a newer version of software? Well, what if I told you that many apps would work perfectly, however, they're being purposely prevented from working on older devices? And I can prove it. The problem is that apps capable of running on older devices and iOS versions are being prevented from working through a system that forces developers to drop support for these devices. If you can't update, you can't download newly updated apps, making the device obsolete. Now, I don't want to discredit Apple here. They offer really good device support in that devices get years of iOS version upgrades. Even some on older versions still receive the odd security update, like the iPhone 6S on iOS 15. But it's just odd to me that no one's noticed AppGate, which is what I'm going to call this. Developers are required to set a minimum version of iOS that their app can run on. In some cases, that could be dictated by a plugin the app is using, or a feature that isn't available on an older version. So there's a legitimate use for this. However, Apple prevents supporting devices running versions of iOS lower than its predetermined target. At the release of iOS 18, Apple raised the minimum app distribution target to iOS 15, or later, from the previous minimum of iOS 12. By raising the allowed development target three versions, it would kill off the iPhone 6 and any iPad models stuck on iOS 12 forcing all app updates to require iOS 15 or later, as per Apple's requirement. This is why anyone running an older iOS version will likely find that apps stop working or stop getting updates all at once. Many of us take for granted our ability to afford a new phone every few years. Those in developing countries can find it harder to afford such a device. The iPhone 6 might be a 10-year-old phone to us, but it's a perfectly capable and usable device to those less fortunate. And what about an old iPad that could have been perfectly usable for a child, now can't download apps? In the early days of the iPhone and iPad, the hardware improvements with each new model were significant, which quickly made the older models incapable of supporting things like complex 3D games and apps. But I'd say for the last 10 years, that hardware has been evolving at a much more gradual pace, which is why some people are upgrading less often. But I recently released an update to my iOS app with a minimum version of iOS 11.0 after Apple introduced the iOS 15 minimum deployment target. So my app supports nine different iOS versions. But how? Apple enforces this requirement by requiring developers to be using the latest version of Xcode by a certain date. The current one at the time of recording being Xcode 16. Each version of Xcode only supports a specific version of Apple's operating systems. If you refuse to update Xcode and try to upload your app update to the App Store, it can see it's been compiled with an older version of Xcode and will block you. After the new target came into effect, I discovered I'd accidentally left a development piece of code in my app, resulting in a non-functioning element being included in the app. One line was all I needed to change but I couldn't push the bug fix update because in order to do so, I needed to update to Xcode 16, which would bring my app in line with Apple's predetermined requirement of supporting iOS 15 or later, meaning anyone running iOS 11 through 14 wouldn't get the bug fix, resulting in that bug being forever present in my app. This wasn't something I was comfortable doing. If you're going to drop support, you need to make sure the app was at an acceptable level with no major issues. And I had a major issue. I reached out to Apple's developer support team to ask for some kind of extension or pardon to release a one-off important bug fix update with the slightly older Xcode 15. I was informed this wasn't possible as they don't offer extensions to the cutoff date. I am just incredibly stubborn, so I wasn't going to give in that easily. Now I understand the requirement of needing the latest version of Xcode because it supports the latest Apple software and SDK. The issue is it also unnecessarily drops support for older versions, forcing developers to drop support also, meaning end users end up with an obsolete device faster in a process known as planned obsolescence, which I think we're all familiar with by now. As a developer, you don't have to support older versions. You can develop only for the latest versions of iOS and Android if you really wanted to. 
However, this would significantly reduce the number of users who'd be able to download your app. But I did beat the minimum iOS version set by Apple. It appears I'm not the only one leveraging this opportunity. While the App Store looks quite bare on my iPad running iOS 12, there are a few apps like Candy Crush still pushing out updates that support iOS 12. Given the version code is listed as 12.0.0 instead of 12.0, you can tell someone's manually added support back, like I have with my app. Trying to run my app in Xcode 16, it says it's targeting an unsupported iOS version, and there's no support files that can be found. Apple's fix? up the minimum version and drop older devices. But unlike other developers, I did something different. You see, it told me it's missing the support files. What if I just copy the support files for the versions from an older version of Xcode and just paste them into the newer version? And if you're thinking there's no way it was that easy, it really was. Just like that, the errors disappeared and the app compiled and ran on those older devices once again. I've been using this method for over a year with no issues to my app or the user experience. Concerningly, the device support folder stops at iOS 16.4, so it appears Apple may now be baking OS support into Xcode in another way, meaning the days of this workaround might be numbered after iOS 16 support is dropped. I thought about keeping this to myself so I could keep supporting older versions for as long as I can, but I think this is something people need to know about. A large part of why your old phone suddenly is obsolete is because of a few 13 megabyte files that allow developers to release their app updates to that version of iOS. A big problem for app developers is bugs, but if you're forced to drop support, you can't issue a bug fix update to all of your user base. My app doesn't store or process any sort of personal data, such as passwords, banking info, or addresses. But for an app that did, you risk exposing customers to security vulnerabilities if you can't patch the older versions too. This may be in part why apps like YouTube have a pop-up telling you this version is not supported, and you must update to continue, even though you can still see YouTube is loading in the background. I tried to understand why Apple has implemented these strict iOS requirements in the first place. Xcode is a gigantuan app at over 12 gigs. Device support from iOS 9 through 16.4 takes up only 504 megabytes. Unless there's a fundamental reason, I don't see why support should be dropped if developers still want to target that version. Trying to maintain support for older versions can be complicated if the code is written in a programming language too new for the OS. However, even the latest version of Xcode supports Swift 4 which works with iOS 8 or later. So to me, that sounds like the real minimum version of Xcode, not iOS 15. When I launched my app, iOS 11 was the minimum supported version. It's hard to maintain that support, but it's even more difficult to gain support for older versions now the app has been developed. Given the function of my app is a device hardware testing app, it's important that it supports as many versions of iOS to allow people to test as many different models of iPhone as possible allowing them to check the functionality if something's amiss, or before purchasing or after repair. This includes things like the touchscreen, checking for burn-in, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality, NFC, compass, gyroscope, and much more. If I'm forced to drop support for older devices, I'm cutting out my own user base. Google's not perfect, but any new requirement they introduce, they usually require the ability to extend that deadline. Both platforms require constant work, but Google's is just simply more forgiving if you have the ability to make an app that doesn't require any features that are only found in newer versions. They don't remove the ability to support older Android versions unless there's a significant reason to do so. Although supporting from Android 8 onwards is more realistic for most developers. Now, I'm not saying all app developers should be made to support older versions of iOS because it's not easy but rather the option to support older versions shouldn't be removed. It seems setting the minimum version for developers is to force older iPhones into obsolescence, not an actual compatibility issue. After all, I've proved it's possible and in fact should work as far back as iOS 8, although I haven't tested an OS that old. What do you think of this? Should Apple be preventing apps from supporting older versions? 
Or do you think developers should be able to support whatever versions they like if they're willing to take the time to maintain support? And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the playlist for tech that's not what it seems. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.